what's up folks this is called and i just wanted to give you all a quick mission statement of what this youtube channel is going to be like going forward and what we're doing for why we're doing everything three scriptures first peter chapter 3 verse 15 says but sanctify the lord god in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in christ but simply this will be a lot of information that will be coming out in the next few weeks and months about what the bible says why it says what it says why we do what we do as christians and what we are supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it that being said instead of being vague i will go to the next scripture which is mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 and you can see the exact mission that Christians do have in today's age. Verse 14. Now after that, John the Baptist was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. We are supposed to be preaching repentance and believing the gospel for salvation. That is what a Christian is supposed to do. If you do not have salvation, you cannot call yourself a Christian. If you do not believe the gospel, you cannot call yourself a Christian. These are the things that we're supposed to break down and get into as Christians, first of all, but also on this channel, because I want this channel to be a resource for information as far as the Bible is concerned and as far as Christianity is concerned. Now, that being said, <clears throat> Christianity is being veiled as more and more vague as time goes on. For some reason, we could go from Christianity and the Bible being them spreading the gospel to Christianity as anything you put on stage with a cross on it. I don't think that's the fact. I don't think that's a fact at all. So Ephesians 5, I'll start at verse 10, says, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So there are things that are dark and evil, maybe like that room, there are things that are dark and evil claiming to be Christianity, and it ain't. And we have to reprove the works of the devil, because the entire goal of Christ coming down to earth was to reconcile sinners unto him. This is a good and faithful saying, Christ came to save sinners of whom I am chief. If we do not see that, if we see somebody else as more of a sinner than we are, first of all, we're a conceited Christian, and second of all, we got pride. And nobody is too small for God to use, but anybody can be too big for God to use. And we want to emphasize on this channel what is and what isn't Christianity, using the Bible, using your Bible. And I hope you've got a Bible in this channel, and if not, we'll still put things on the screen and whatnot for you to see. But that being said, let this short video just be a blessing unto you, and I hope to see you next time. Very simply put, the Bible explains that there are four things, I believe, and if not more, that we must understand in order to become what is clarified as born again. And then we come into the, being a Christian as we are disciples, as they were called first in Antioch. But that being said, the Bible says that a Christian or a born again person is born of water and of spirit. Nevertheless, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and spirit, he shall not be born again. If you are not born again, you are not a Christian. I don't know how to clarify that any simpler, but we must be born of spirit, which is the second birth. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. What does that mean? That means everybody needed Christ to die for them in order for them to become born again and make it to heaven. So if we don't see that we have sin, if we don't see that we are missing the mark, as some people say, then we we have a problem because then we're equating ourselves to Jesus, which is a standard none of us can live up to because at some point or another, you hated your brother, you stole, you lied, you killed, you cheated. Uh, you did something that the Bible would clarify as a sin. You either did it or you thought it in your heart. Maybe you've never done anything to your hands ever, but you have thought it in your heart. The Bible says that Jesus said, actually, if you think it, then you did it. If you're lusting in your heart after somebody or something, you did it. The Bible will also clarify that if I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How can I walk in the spirit and not do these things that are sins anymore? I'm glad you asked because the Bible says that we were separated because the iniquity that I regard in my heart means that Christ will not hear me, but I want him to hear me. I want him to hear my prayers. And sometimes my prayers will go up in the air and it'll hit a wall and come right back down into my eardrums. That being said, I need to repent in my heart, which means believe that my sins do cause separation from God, which is referred to as death, because there is an eternal separation from God, which is hell, which all of us did earn through having at least one sin. One sin, which means if you decided that you're never going to sin again in your life and you still don't have the gospel in your heart, you're still going to hell. But that being said, 
Christ died for the ungodly. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were weak and we were unable to do things for ourselves and we cannot be saved by our works because our works are what got us into hell in the first place. But Christ, who is the sinless God and his blood was all we needed for the sacrifice, decided that he would come down and die on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that is the gospel. If you believe that in your heart, that he died for you, then you are saved. You are born again. <clears throat> Logically, just think about this. God created the world and created us all to enjoy heaven and created a, a world that was not intended for, or I should say a location in hell that was not intended for people to be, but we all fall short of the glory of God. How logically would he make a way for us to come into heaven if we couldn't do it ourselves because we caused the, the, the destiny in hell? I would say it's only logical that Christ would come down and die on the cross for our sins because we can't earn it. We can't do it ourselves. And we're separated from God unless we believe the gospel. So I pray that you believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth that Christ died for you. Because logically, he wants us in heaven. He wants us in heaven with him. And he would like all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of truth. That's up to us to believe the gospel and to receive the gospel, which is logical. I don't think God, who is a loving God, who is love, would ever tell us we're just destined to go to hell and he's never going to do anything about it. What did he do about it? He came down, down the cross for our sins. That being said, I'm going to redecorate. I hope y'all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.